when you're lying in bed at night, do you ever randomly remember some relatively minor social missteps or poorly chosen words you did slash said years earlier, and then beat yourself up over it, even though it really wasn't a big deal? If so, what happened? I went to Dairy Queen with my daughter. She brought along her kitten. The cute girl at the walk-up window asked my daughter what the kitten's name was. Princess was the response. Smiling and feebly attempting to make conversation, I said, today, to indicate that my daughter changed the cat's name frequently. I got a dirty look and the girl left the window to go make whatever cold treat we had ordered. It wasn't until later, on the walk home, that I realized that she thought I was telling her to hurry the hell up and make my order. Still haunts me years later for some reason. When I walked down the aisle at my wedding, I was so nervous and focused on not tripping that I did not acknowledge my dad. I didn't realize this until I saw the video my aunt had made for me. You can see my dad lean in to give me a kiss on the cheek, but I just keep walking. He kind of shrugs and then goes to sit down. It's been 18 years and this still flashes through my head when I'm trying to fall asleep. Also, that time I was trying to get to get to the school bus and the sidewalk was icy, so I slipped and fell really hard on my butt. The kids on the bus laughed at me, so I chose to sit there with my head down, wishing I could disappear while the bus drove away and I walked a mile home, yes, in the snow, uphill, both ways. 4th grade classroom, we were having a face off between students on who could name the capital of whichever state our teacher named. I had been on a roll getting a few correct in a row. Then the teacher says Kentucky. With all of the enthusiasm and seriousness in the world, I screamed Frankfurt. Everyone was dying laughing except for me at the time. Looking back, it cracks me up that I was so upset about it. I was in the 4th grade, and it was Valentine's Day, I was the new kid in school and this one boy had been picking on me all year. My 10 year old self was very non-confrontational, so I wrote a paragraph on the back of his nerds valentine explaining that I don't like it when he's mean to me, and I don't understand why he has to be. He couldn't read my handwriting, and brought it to the teacher, who made me read it aloud to both of them. I think about that day every day of my life. He even ended up finding me online and contacting me to apologize a few years ago but all I can think of is the cringe. I was visiting Portland for a wedding that lined up with my birthday as well. We went out to celebrate and finished the night at a karaoke bar. Realizing I'm too drunk to sing I pick my name is by Eminem as my song to perform. There's two versions of that song. One is the original release, the other tamed down, which you most commonly hear today. The woman controlling the music put on the original, and off I went. One of the lines at the end is, running over lesbians in a spaceship, while they screaming at me let's just be friends. I finish the song, and I'm met by applause from my friends, and one other table. The rest of the place is silent. The DJ goes, nice job. Don't know if it was the best choice for gay women's night though, and at that moment I wanted to leave my skin. In 7th grade, a cute girl asked me to sit next to her. I said my mom won't let me sit next to girls. My mom said no such thing. I accidentally mixed up an inside joke with the wrong friend group with disastrous results. Friend group hash 1. The joke was when someone calls and asks who's all there we would add Daryl to the list of names. Daryl wasn't a real person. The joke wasn't really funny and made no sense out of context, but I guess that's why it was an inside joke. Friend group hash 2. I was hanging out playing some drinking games with a bunch of people that I hadn't hung out with in a while. It was a kind of get together to remember a friend that they had who had recently died in a car accident. I didn't know him that well, but I was always down to party. Anyway the phone rings, and the person who answered started listing off names. Sorting my cards for another round of presidents and assholes I handedly said hey and Daryl. It was the typical record scratch moment where everyone stopped and looked at me. Daryl was the name of the friend who had just died. This happened in 2002, and I still think about it all the time. When I was in the 4th grade, I lived in the middle of nowhere and there was practically no minorities, just white country people. 
This Mexican family had just moved in and could barely speak any English, and I befriended one of the kids my age in school. He came over to my place and we were both joking around about his bad English. Just doing what kids do. I would pretend to speak with his accent, and then he would copy, and it was silly, stupid and innocent. My mom told me I was being really inconsiderate, and how uncool it was to make fun of someone for not being able to speak English. I felt terrible. The next day at school my friend came up to me, and started joking with me again, but I just shook my head, and looked down at my desk in embarrassment. He had no idea what was wrong and I was too young and dumb to be able to explain my behavior to him. As I grew older I spent probably 20 years thinking about that day and how much of a shit I was to be friendly one day and then without explaining anything just stop talking to him out of embarrassment. I felt really bad about it for a long time and often laid awake at nights thinking about it. I ended up finding him on Facebook about a year ago and we friended each other, so I told him how bad I felt about it and apologized. He just laughed it off and said it was no big deal and he was still really thankful to find someone as friendly as me when he didn't know anyone here. He said he figured my mom had said something to me about it and it never bothered him. I don't know if maybe he was just being nice to me or not but it was such a relief to hear it. It really felt like a weight had been lifted off of me. I was visiting my cousin about 4 months ago and we didn't have the same greeting handshake. So it was like that really weird thing with your hands, where you end up in some super awkward handshake. Last night I thought about this like 20 minutes and blamed myself. SMH that was super unnecessary. Junior prom I blurted out during dinner to my date, I'm so bored, and I have no idea why it came out of my mouth. I'm pretty well mannered and quiet, I forget how I tried to play it off, but I felt so bad was talking with a black friend of mine, and we were discussing random haircuts and styles we would get if we were other races. I said I wanted that common look, he thought I said that common look. I meant the rapper. Shaved head with the nice trimmed up goatee. It didn't dawn on me until a week later why he gave me that weird look after I said it. He thought I was saying that common look every black guy has. Still makes me twitch every once in a while. For most of my education, I went to public school, and like most kids, I was socially awkward. For high school, I received an academic scholarship to a private Catholic school it was a really big deal for my family. I didn't know anyone at the new school between an odd combination of academics, sports and the tail end of puberty, I became very popular in this new school. I wasn't used to the attention and it definitely got to my teenage head. Nearly all of my social circles became around the new school, and not with my old local friends. I'm in my junior year, I head to a McDonald's for lunch with a few friends from the new school. Working the counter, I see a girl who I used to go to public school with, that I used to have a crush on. She just lit up, when she saw me, she was so excited, and I, I was a shitty teenager and I just ignored her. I pretended I didn't recognize her. She looked so deflated when I didn't acknowledge her. Note this was the 90s. My family moved a few times after that. I settled down in a different part of the country after university. I never made it back to that town. I've relived that asshole moment for years now. Fast forward to one of those nights when I relive that moment and I decide to look her up on Facebook to apologize. I find out she died 10 years ago in an auto accident. Since I found out her fate, I feel even more awful about that moment. When I was in 5th grade, our teacher said a joke in front of the class and everyone laughed including myself. After the laughter died down, a girl looked up at me and said, You have a really damn disgusting laugh. Oh. I became so self-conscious about laughter since that specific day, and after years I have trouble actually laughing. My brain kinda made it a habit to just smile or slightly chuckle at something, even if it is really funny. Edit, the girl's last name, when translated from my native language to English, it's, cock. Have a nice day. Freshman year of high school. It was one of those days before school starts, and you meet your teacher and your parents are there. My teacher was handing me a piece of paper and I didn't see the paper, so I shook his hand. He said, oh, 
and my mom said, um, and I panicked and said, I just wanted to be polite. So I still want to die when I think of that. Yes. When I was in high school we had to give in feedback forms about our teachers. I was just going to submit mine totally blank, but the teacher in charge at the time told me that I had to write something for every teacher. Stupidly, I decided to be completely honest and to write exactly what I thought of them. It was all nice, except for one teacher's which was just ex Mrs. Very Scary, but she's a good teacher. I meant both of those, but it didn't matter. The teacher was seriously hurt by it, although she pretended it was NBD at first. Then as the weeks went by she would mention it once a week, gradually seeming more and more upset. Until one day, when another student mentioned being scared to ask her about something, she shouted at him for an entire period. She also mentioned me a bunch, saying she would never forget what I said, but could forgive me. Anyways, she was the type of teacher to really consider her students to be her own kids and I guess me being scared of her hurt her. I do regret that. When I was 11, it was my first day at a new school and all the other students were also new. The maths teacher started our first class by asking each of us about our education background, what school we came from, what they taught in our last year's maths class etc. Just trying to get a general idea of what kind of students he was dealing with. Thing is, I was so nervous that I spaced out for a bit and got lost in my overthinking mind, so I didn't hear the teacher's questions to my classmates. When it got to my turn, the teacher just said, now tell me about you, assuming I understood what kind of information he was expecting. I just went straight into a monologue that started with, so I was born in the south zone of the city, but my mom decided to move to our current neighborhood a few months after divorcing my dad and went on and on giving some very specific details about my short life. Everyone had a really confused look on their faces, and as soon as I realized the teacher was also completely lost I stopped talking and went instantly red. The teacher then said, that's all really great, but I was only interested in what happened last year, not the last 10, and everyone started laughing. Next day nobody remembered it anymore, but 12 years later it still comes to mind in pretty random moments. This happened back when I was 6th or 7th grade. Me and a couple of friends were browsing the neighborhood our school was in after the school day was over. We happened on a bus stop with couple of girls seemingly our age. We stopped and tried to chat them up, but their bus came soon after, and they had to go. We see their bus stop at a traffic light not 20 meters away, and one of us says, let's run to the next stop. Nobody thought to ask, then what, and off we were, sprinting madly behind the bus. Surprisingly enough, we somehow made it to the next stop, just as the bus was arriving. Then the doors opened, the girls sat there giggling and we did nothing, literally. I even remember it like the bus driver held the doors a bit longer, but I might as well might be imagining it as the memory is so old. We just sat there, trying to catch our breaths as my lungs burned. And then the doors closed, and the bus went off to the next stop. And none of us said anything. We just walked it off, went on to the next stupid shit we would do. I don't know about any of the other guys, but this still haunts me as one of the cringiest moments of my life so far. I went through a phase where I scolded people for eating Harry Potter because my parents told me it was evil. Lots of awkward situations because of that. Don't forget to consider the idea to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.